website right now and download my free course on Alternate Picking Mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to Alternate Picking Mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. Mixed the Lydian sound. Um, a new question, and I should say that I read all the comments below these YouTube videos. So if you have anything to ask me, please do so, and I'll answer your questions in a future video. This question is about how to lay out arpeggio shapes because this guy is just all into it right now, trying to solo with the arpeggio shape using the major scale slash minor scale, same thing, and then you know focusing on the chord notes of the chord being played. Um, and so how do you lay out these arpeggio shapes? And, and the first thing we're taught is that, you know, we have the cage shapes, right? And those are really cool shapes. They're based on the fact that we want to stay vertical when we play. We assign one finger per fret, and then we want to play a scale. This is the C major scale. You know, all the way without moving too much back and forth. It's a classical way of thinking, basically. Um, and which is, you know, all, it's very focused on not moving very much. You know, economy of movement is the big thing because then you can execute more accurately. It's easier to execute more accurately. And that's everything in classical music. You know, you don't have to improvise, you don't have to come up with stuff, but you play the thing that's on those notes and you play it perfectly. That's execution, right? And the way to execute in the most accurate way is to make sure that you don't jump around and do all kinds of things as you do it. But when, it's, when we take this instrument and bring it into rock and jazz and do all kinds of stuff with vibrato and sliding and bending and you know add distortion we want to do some new stuff but the cage shapes are focused vertically and we have five of them so if you look up the diatonic scale or the major scale the five cage shapes c a g e d then you'll find five of them all focused on staying vertical uh, because if you say, okay, let's let's play this and let's play it all vertical, and you end up with two notes on some of the strings, or, or one of the strings, in order to stay vertical. If you if you want three notes per string, suddenly you have to play two whole tones on one string, right? Like this, and that is relevant for arpeggios because then think about it: we have seven notes in the major scale, right? And that also means that we have seven different chords because every chord, you take one of the notes, uh, in this case the C, and then you take every other note until you have three notes. In that scale, so you focus on the notes, right? And then you get a C major, triad, three notes. You can also do four, four notes, right? And then that it makes you end up with a C major seventh because that's how the notes are really positioned uh, in relation to each other. And that gives you, and then you can do the same thing from the second step and the third and the fourth and the fifth, and then you get seven different chords. And those chords have arpeggios, which is basically just the notes of the chord played separately, right? Right? And I have a solution for the three note uh, version of these arpeggios, these chord notes, and the four note. Um, and I'll just, you know, give it to you. Because when you look at the cage shapes, just think about it. If you have to play the arpeggio shapes within each cage, this is important to understand. If we take the first cage shape, and we then take a piece of paper, we mark it out, and then we start, you know, circling the notes of the C major chord within that. That was the four note version and the three note version. All right? Then we end up with a shape, a visual shape on, on top of that, right? And the same thing goes if we take the, the second uh, arpeggio and the third and the fifth and so on, right? And then suddenly we end up with one cage shape that has seven different visually different arpeggio shapes on top of it that we have to learn. But that's just one cage shape. Then we have the second cage shape. And if we take the C major uh, arpeggio, again, the C major seventh, or just the C major triad, and lay it out, you know, circle the notes, then we get one new shape. And then the next chord, the next, 
each one of the seven has a new visually different shape within that cage shape. So we get seven, 14, 21, 28, right? So it's just, it's just an enormous amount, but we're used to that because, you know, we learn chords and that's a different shape for each chord. On a piano, that's very different, right? We have one octave and everything looks basically the same. You can invert it and take the top note and put it in the bottom and so on, but basically it's, it's very simple. On a guitar, because we have the same note multiple places on the neck, you can do all kinds of versions of the simple C major chord, right? and play it in, in all kinds of places. So we're used to that thing where the, all the shapes we have to learn. But there's something annoying about the cage shapes and, uh, and I, don't, I don't say that they are bad. They just have something that they're not good at, right? It's like saying this person is not good at carpentry, but he's good at so many other things. But if you want your chair fixed, then please go to another person, right? And that's the same thing here. They are not bad, they just have that limitation. And the limitation, for instance, is that enormous amount of arpeggio shapes that you get if you want. And you can, of course, learn them, no, no problem, right? But if you want to play them fast, it's a really bad idea to have an uneven amount of notes placed on, on the strings and just like with the cage shapes, right? If you want to play a sequence, then you're going to have trouble you know, playing it through these odd shapes where you have three notes and two notes on one string. So, in order for me to get that kind of um, system in it, in my learning, I designed a way to do the three note arpeggios and the four note arpeggios. The three note arpeggios, I basically just took the, the, uh, uh, the sweep picking um, angle on it, and I said, okay, if you have an A minor, try it, right? Then I design it, I lay it out on the fretboard, so I play two notes on the bottom string I'm playing, and two notes on the top. Most of you know this. A uh, way of laying out that triad arpeggio. And then all the, the strings in between, I just have one note. So I ended up with two down there and then... And that's your choice. You can do that. You can just sit down with a piece of paper, say, okay, the A minor triad is A, it's C, and it's E. Let me take the first A on the low E string, then the next C on the low E string, and then the, the E on the A, and then what's the next note? It's A. So let's jump to the next string and play that. And then the next note is C. Let me play that on the G and so on. So you can simply mark them out. And that shape allowed me to do a fast sweep picking. And then I go to the next note, the C from the low E string and do the same thing. And lay it out like that. The same thing here. Right, all the way up. And you can find that's a very common sweeping, uh, sweep picking. But that also is a good way to lay them out because now I can actually say, okay, if I have the C major scale here, right? And I've learned the K shape and I can put them together and to some degree play horizontally. Then if I have that E, uh, let me just say the A minor to get kind of a, have that in the background there. And I use the C major scale, which is also the A minor scale. And now I have like, the A minor shape there, and I can use my K shape. And I can see the notes of that arpeggio and the K shape at the same time. Move to the next K shape. And sometimes I have to move in between two K shapes because the arpeggio stretches. It's right, that next stretches between two cage shapes, so I have to integrate them, which is a nice exercise. So I can go and try to try to visualize the arpeggio there. Now I'm in between two cage shapes with my arpeggio here. Right, always focusing on the notes of the arpeggio. Next one up here. But because there are so far, the notes are so far apart in an arpeggio, you can't really, the K shape doesn't, doesn't cut it when you start really laying them out so you can play them. Because it's all about the, it's not all about it, but it's about having a system of laying them out. Because any triad now only has three shapes because there are three notes in a minor triad, right? And I have the first one here that I can play from my uh, E string. I can also play it from the A string and say, okay, I, I want to start on the A string. 
and I want to lay out two notes on the A string, and then one in between, and then two in the top. Of course, you have to be at a certain level to understand what I'm doing here, right? So now I can play the same. Right? And the same thing goes up here. I can play it from the E string with two notes, or from the A string with two notes on that string, and then one on the others, right? Um, but that's only, you know, one, two, three, bam, I have a minor arpeggio. And it looks the same thing if I'm playing E minor. It's the same thing. Right, so that's a really, that's a, that's, that's a fast uh, thing to learn, right? And then I have the major. Those are only, there's only three notes in it, so. <laughs> right? So one position here, I'm playing the C major scale, or, or the uh, C arpeggio, next position, next position, three, right? So check them out. Two notes on the first, one and then two note on the last string. And then you will have three minor shapes and three major shapes. Learn those, mix them with the cage shapes you know, all the three note per string, whatever you're used to laying out the major minor scale, right? And then start, you know, and look at it at a chart if you need to and say, okay, how can I? And you have to go in between shapes when you start learning arpeggios, okay? So that's the triad system I adapted to. Then there's the four note, um, four note arpeggio. And that's what I talk about in the, the video on YouTube here that calls magical arpeggio shape. Uh, arpeggio system uh, lets you whatever, right? So if you search for magical arpeggios, whatever, then you'll find that video. Um, but that's a way where we say, okay, we now, we lay out this, the, the, instead of just having the cage system and just finding the notes within each of the five cage shapes, we're going to focus on how we play the arpeggio instead and just, you know, discard of the cage system. And if you do that, you can do two, one, two shapes. And that's what I talk about in that video. That's what my modal mastery system is based on completely. It's, a, it's my biggest program because it's all about how do you utilize these, these two, one, two shapes. If you lay out a four note arpeggio, any four note arpeggio, so you have two notes on the first string, one note on the next, and two on the next, then you have a way of picking. That's the same every time. Right? And that's what I use. Um, and, it's, and, and if you continue that, let's say you start on the A string, let's just, let's just lay out uh, an A minor, uh, seventh, as a two, one, two pattern, giving me two notes on the first, we have the A and the C right, on the first string, in the 12th and the 15th fret on the A string. Then we have the 14th fret E on the next string, because we need two on the first, one on the next, and then two in the 12th and the 14th, right? Now I'm playing the notes of the A minor seventh, just laid out as I choose with two notes on the first string, one on the next, and two on the next, right? And I can continue. Since I have two notes on the G string in the 12th and 14th, I now want one note on the next string, which would be the C in the, in the 13th fret on the B string. 12th note and 15th fret, 12th fret and 15th fret on the high E string. So that's two, one, two, one, two. Now I have a nice little that I can play. I can practice the A minor seventh this way. Using hammer-ons and pull-offs, using sweep picking. Right? And every single technique I learn, I can use in any other arpeggio because, because it's the same way I'm laying them, them out, right? And suddenly, I use the same techniques, the same way of moving through the arpeggio, and then I can use the scale notes as, you know, passing notes as we talked about. But that 2-1-2 two, two sh system allows me to have the same technique every time I play the arpeggio shape. And every, everything I learn in one arpeggio shape, I can easily convert to another arpeggio shape. So for instance, let's say I have a lick like. That was the A minor seventh arpeggio laid out in a 2-1-2 two, two shape. And then I use the notes in between in the 13th fret, right, from the scale. I can do that in a major seventh context as well. 
Ouais. Ouais. <rire> That was the C major seventh. Uh, let's play an E mi minor seventh. Let's play a, uh, a G dominant seventh arpeggio up here, for instance. Right? Uh, <laughs> it's magical <laughs> because it allows me, I can just convert any line that I play to any other arpeggio within the key. Um, what can we do? We can play the, the B minor seventh flat five. Might so suddenly it's Locrian. Right? And you get four different arpeggio shapes for each uh, four note arpeggio, like with the th with the, the minor and the major arpeggios. I hope this makes sense to you. If it doesn't, you just you know look into it. Uh, but if you're on that level where you're really into arpeggios, really want to do the best thing for yourself, then I urge you to look into dividing each four note arpeggio up into two one two shapes, starting on the A string and starting on the E string. And then that will give you a system that you can use to really master this. And for the three note arpeggios, then have two notes on the first string and two notes on the last, and then just... And you can find these uh, three note arpeggios on my old website, The Wizard of Shred. Dot com uh, under resources that's they're just listed up um, with with charts. So have fun with it. Uh, and if this was too confusing uh, for you, then just look into it. You know, read up on it, and then come back here and watch it again. And say, oh, you get something new, and then you know, go back and forth like that. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.